My dear friends, members of the All India Anglo-Indian Association, other Anglo-Indians living across India and other countries, Air Marshal Denzel Keeler, President of the All India Anglo-Indian Education Institution, with whom we work very, very uh, closely with. I'm seeing my messages. Most of people are seeing today. Vice Presidents of the All India Anglo-Indian Education Institution, Mr. Anthem and Mr. David Hilton, members of the All India Anglo-Indian Education Institution, members of the governing body that I'm privileged to head, Dr. Ross Nigley, Mr. Adrian De Cruz, Mr. Derek Fernandez, Mr. Warren Latouche, Dr. Philip Toker, Mr. Justin Clark, Mr. Eric De Rosario, Mr. Bernard Rodericks, Mr. Eddie Jones, Mrs. Michelle Middleton, Mrs. Delphine Dubois, and the Honorary Treasurer, Mr. Glenn Goldston, and the Honorary General Secretary, Mr. Rudolph Woodman. Senior citizens, a special message and to you are very enterprising youth, little children, and everybody who's still patiently watching. Often we hear people saying from the pulpit and other places that many people have lost Christ in Christmas. Over the years I've been hearing it, not today only. That there's too much uh, fanfare and fiesta and food and fun and party hopping and decorations, etc. Actually, when it comes to non-Christians, I think it's a wonderful thing that they do it. It's like us when we celebrate Diwali or Holi. It's wonderful that we do it socially or culturally. But as Christians, I believe that this pandemic has given us a huge opportunity to introspect and to ask ourselves, is Christ really there in our Christmas, in our homes, in our hearts? So I would like to share with you a story that I wrote. I write uh, for children, for, for a living actually. So I wrote this story maybe 25 years ago when I was doing a book and uh, it was very much, it was appreciated and well received. And I write in the words of a teenager. So somebody, picture somebody in, who's about a young teens, maybe 14 or 15 years old. Yeah. And then I will come to speak a little about my message, which takes off from the story. It's called My Dream Christmas. What's happening? Why is the tree blue? Why is Santa wearing green? And why is Jim Reeves singing Red Christmas? What's wrong with this world? I was confused. I was scared. Why wasn't Christmas like it used to be? Tastefully decorated Christmas trees, green Christmas trees, Santa's patented red suit and the traditional white Christmas ringing out by Bing Crosby. Nothing seemed right. For this Christmas. The overweight man behind the counter at the confectionery smiled as he slipped a small Christmas cake to the undernourished boy playing carols on his mouth organ. And what's more, he didn't even charge the boy a penny. The lady next door had a kind word for Mira, the young girl who takes out the garbage. And what's more, she gave her two old dresses. My aunt visited her cousin's house for the first time in seven years since her son got married. And wonder of wonders, she hugged her daughter-in-law for the first time. My friend Mike, well, he didn't back chat his parents for a change. He gave his father a sentimental card which just said, thank you, dad, for all you've done for me. And to his mother, he gave a single rose which said it all. And miracle of miracles, my brother, James, and I were not fighting over the same pair of Nike shoes. In fact, we were telling our father that we would like to give an old pair, which didn't fit us properly in any case, to Ganeshda, who was his office peon, for his son as a Christmas gift. But 
Instead of getting into the car to go to Ganeshtha's house with the Nike shoes, my mother called out to me, wake up son, it's Christmas, there's so much to do, it's very late. I woke up with a start. Oh, thank goodness. Our tree was still green. Mm. And Santa on the mantelpiece still wore his red suit. And Jim Reeves and Bing Crosby were both still singing White Christmas. What a relief. All was right with this Christmas. The overweight man at the counter, in a bad mood as usual, grumbled at the mouth organ player for coming into the confectionery when there was such a crowd. The lady next door yelled as usual at Mira for dropping bits of rubbish in the corridor. My aunt, as usual, tactfully avoided going to my cousin's house so that she didn't have to hug her daughter-in-law. Mike phoned me to criticize his narrow-minded parents for not understanding him. Half Christmas Day, I paused to think. Wouldn't it be great if Christmas was not right the christmas of my dream a blue tree santa in green and a red christmas being sung by jim reeves and love all around well why not i thought so i told my brother when i woke up that he could wear the nikes unless of course uh, he thought it was a better idea to give it to ganeshda's son my brother was shocked and touched. We went to my father and requested him to take us to Ganeshtha's house with the shoes. Dad smiled as only he can and agreed spontaneously. Mum gift wrapped the old Nikes and wiped a tear. She looked on with pride as we got into the car. All was right with this Christmas. Santa was in green. The tree was blue. Bing Crosby was singing whatever song in whatever color. This was my dream Christmas. We were making it happen. Friends, it's time to look beyond colors, outward appearance, decorations and trees. It's wonderful. Obviously, we have it. Even in my home, I have a lovely, beautiful, we have a lovely tree. We have lights, we have decorations. There's salt meat and tongue, which I've been tasting. Uh, lots of yummy Christmas cakes in Calcutta, you know. We have all that. But each one of us needs to just take a re-look and bring the Christ back in Christmas. Especially in this hour in this day and in these few months. So I'm going to share with you very quickly what for me is Christ or who for me is Christ or what does Christ stand for? C-H-R-I-S-T. The C, I believe strongly, stands for care, caring, being charitable. If you're not caring, if you're not charitable, actually, you've missed the point of being a Christian. So, Fortunately, most Anglo-Indians and most Christians are very, very caring. We care for our neighbors. We care for the people who work in our homes. We care for people in general because we, the, the center point of Christianity surely is caring for people. So it's important that individuals and branches continue to reach out as they are. Friends, I can't tell you how quietly some of our branches are working and individuals, governing body members, other members who are looking after people, giving them rations, helping them, caring for them in a special way. I salute those, I think, 35, 40 branches who have sent me messages over the last nine or 10 months of what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being Christian and all the individuals also who do it very, very quietly. Uh, the, the wall of togetherness, which we are trying to collect money for, people are actually quietly giving money over there. Most of them are saying, you know, put in memory of, you know, don't make a big shusha about it. Thank you very much. The H is a word I've never used publicly before because I didn't think much of the word actually till nine, 10 months ago, hope. 
Hope is a word which is usually associated with people who are hopeless cases. Backs to the wall, uh, having things going wrong with them. So that's why many people like me never use the word hope. But I think today is a day to give hope. Hope for yourself. Don't be disheartened. Don't be depressed. It's a phase and we have to fight it out. Even if we have to take the meat and fish and even the vegetables off our tables and eat dal and rice or dal and rice or, you know, our grandfathers, grandparents and, and our parents have done it. So, you know, if it comes to that, we can do it, but we can't give up hope. And not only we can't give up hope, or that the person who lives next door, that the people of our family, the people who have lost their jobs, the people who are in, in deep, deep distress, they don't give up hope. So if you can give money, it's great. If you can give rations or help, it's great. But if you can't even give that for some reason, pick up the telephone and talk to somebody, share a smile with somebody, have a video chat with somebody and pass on a message of hope. The R is respect. Friends, lacking. The world lacks respect for itself. Countries less lack respect for their politicians. Politicians res lack respect for their countries. Leaders res lack respect for their people. People lack respect for their leaders. It's time to reflect and respect. I always say that in any relationship, even greater than love, is the gift of respect. So, in our community, in our association, presidents and committees, please give respect to your members. The way you talk to them, the way you should be listening to them, the way you connect with them. They're your equal. Elect, you are elected by them. And members, please respect the president and the committee. You have elected them. And even if you haven't, if you didn't vote for them, you must respect them because people need to be respected. Because unless there's a reciprocal two-way respect, you're not going to be able to sit and talk about anything. So I think it's an extremely key word, and I'm so sorry to tell you this, but uh, many of our elders don't get the respect from youth, and many of our youth don't respect elders. Uh, I mean, sorry, one, it's both the ways. I think elders must also respect youths. It's very important in this day and age. I'm happy to say that in our community, there are most of the people are quite respectful. And that's very important. But please respect those who are on the committee and the other com committee members. Please respect those who are not. Because I think it's extremely important. And don't lose your own self-respect look at yourself in the mirror one morning because you haven't been truthful or honest in your duties as an association member, as a community member, as a person, well then, start respecting yourself. It's never too late. I, C-H-R-I, the I, I have chosen a word which is extremely, extremely topical, a word that we use very often these days, immunity. Christ was the king of immunity in my thoughts. He was so immune to things happening around him, no virus could enter his mind or soul. People talked badly about people talked badly about himself, about him, they tore him apart, but he was just immune, as if he wasn't even there. And he knew when not to be immune. So I think it's extremely important. There's a lot of gossip or there's a lot of judging, you know, whether it's about the president in chief or governing party members or, 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 or committee members, or you're just your friends and your neighbors and family. We are over judging people all the time and, and, and talking about the other. Okay. But I'm suggesting to you, just be immune to as much as possible. Be calm. Okay. Because I can tell you, Another word for immunity is being thick skin. That's a good Anglo Indian word. And I have developed, my skin is getting thicker and I'm becoming more and more immune. And that helps me stay. S for solidarity. A very important word. 
Jesus showed solidarity with the so-called fallen woman. Jesus showed solidarity with people who were written off. Jesus so showed solidarity with the Roman soldier. Jesus, Jesus showed solidarity even with the two fellows who were being crucified on his right and on his left. He showed solidarity all the way. Let's show solidarity. Everybody's not crazy enough to want to become the president in chief or a president or a or a you know or a committee member to give so much time. But that's fine. If you don't want to give the time, that's fine. But you don't want to give the time or you can't give the time or you're busy or you have a, a job which you can't get away from. That's fine. But show solidarity with people who are doing. Show solidarity, the solidarity of support, the solidarity in words, the solidarity in a smile, the solidarity with a pat on your back, the solidarity with a message saying, well done, the solidarity of silence, if nothing else. The solidarity of silence also. But if you're not doing anything or you're not going out of the way and you're just criticizing, you're not showing solidarity. I think it's extremely important for us to show solidarity. Solidarity with the person who does not have room. Don't bang the door of your inn in his face when he is going around looking for a place for his newborn baby to be born with his pregnant wife. Show solidarity. It's time, friends, to show solidarity in a big way to each other because I believe it's desperately needed today. And it's needed particularly, I believe, with people who are fallen. When I say fallen, I don't mean little meaning of fallen. Fallen meaning people who have lost their jobs. People who have fallen in wealth. People who have fallen in with friends, friends have disappeared. People who have fallen in family, families have disappeared. People who have fallen in confidence. It's time to show solidarity. And friends, both solidarity and respect from the Christian community and the anglo indian community, no offense to all our friends who are watching from other communities, but I think we are a silent, small, shining example where we show solidarity and respect to people, we should and we do, to people of all genders. There are no days a month when our girls and women cannot enter the kitchen or sleep on the bed. They are equal to men, if not more. I mean, unequal because we know our mothers and wives and daughters are have the upper hand of them. There is no no other community which shows as much solidarity and respect to people of other castes and communities because we are we don't have any caste we don't have any caste system just because your name is o'brien or hoffland or hayden doesn't make you a, a particular caste we're all equal and nobody is untouchable for us nobody we can drink water or anything that anybody serves us we don't have to worry about his caste I'll tell you a quick little uh, story. My mind goes back to we uh, three boys with my mom and dad. We used to live in a Bengali area. All, all Bengalis, no Christians, no Anglo Indians, only us. Uh, and I used to wonder and I used to ask my mother why we didn't have two doors and all the other homes over there had a side outside door and we didn't. My mother explained to me that it was my great grandmother Christian who built it and all the others were not built by her. There, the separate door was for the Jamadar called in those days, the sweeper, who often belonged to a low caste or so-called untouchable caste, for him to enter quickly, clean the bathroom or toilet or the dirty areas and go away, not enter through the house. Babulal, who was our, the person who, cleaned everything. Actually, he was physically cleaner than all of us put together. But he would just walk in. We allowed him and he, he couldn't handle it. But we told him, you must do it. And we used to often call him when our, when the, when our wasn't there. He would come and clean and wash. And I can remember many occasions on which I asked him to serve me water. And uh, there was no problem. And I'm sure you do the same. So solidarity and respect with all people, everybody.
is an equal in God's eyes. And all Christians believe that. And we continue to do so. And finally, T for tenacity. The tenacity of Christ is unparalleled. The ten physical tenacity of a man beaten, bruised, whipped and spat on, bleeding and hurt and, and barely breathing, to climb up with that heavy cross and fall once and fall twice and fall three times and remember then to ask the women how they were and their children weep for your children. The tenacity, the physical tenacity of fasting, the mental tenacity of, of just not, what, not being bothered about the negative elements around him. Friends, it's time to strengthen our minds and bodies with that sort of tenacity. The tenacity to fight for a good job. When I say fight back, I don't mean go to your employers and fight back. You know what I mean. The tenacity to find a way of earning money. Self-employment. The, 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 the tenacity to try and get yourself and buy yourself and things that you want, but the tenacity to get a job, the tenacity to look after your family, the tenacity to keep striving. That's my message to you today. See, let's be caring, continue to be caring. H, let's give hope to ourselves and our future. Everything will be all right, finally. Hope, bring hope to others. Respect yourself and others. Immunity, be immune to people's judgments. Be immune to people showing you disrespect. Be immune to negativity. And brace yourself for a brighter future by deciding for yourself with your friends and family how you'll move forward. Solidarity with the people around you, your leaders, your friends, and if you can't help them or if you can't assist them or if you can't be a part of it, at least show solidarity in silence or with a smile. And tenacity, physical strength and stamina, mental strength and stamina, to show tenacity. Well, it's a little longer because I said, since we've started, uh, we don't have to uh, worry about time now. But that's my message to you this Christmas. Please, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, let us use these nine or 10 months, look back on it as we wait for the, for the vaccine. It will come, uh, we will have it, uh, we will fight this pandemic and we will help people get their jobs back or people will get their jobs back. People will be employed again. Till that happens, let us be patient. Let us be strong. Let us be strong-willed. Let us be Christian. Let us be Christ-like. Thank you for your love and support to Denise and our family. Thank you all very, very much for your wishes. Keep praying for us. We will pray for you. God bless you. Merry Christmas.